If you are a chess lover and a learner like me, then you must have come across Jonathan Schranz from the St. Louis Chess Club. He's a chess coach, a wonderful human being who makes learning chess a good fun and interesting as well. He plays some nice gambits all across, be it Halloween Gambit, be it the Evans Gambit. And a couple of his favorite gambits nowadays are Urusov and uh, the Nachmanson Gambit, which is gaining a lot of popularity these days amongst grandmasters as well. Recently, uh, one of the grandmasters defeated Magnus Carlsen with it. So yeah, that's certainly gaining a lot of interest these days. Plus, he's about to have a good chess course as well on Chessable. So yeah, a renowned personality uh, in the chess world. And he's a good person. He he plays chess, he streams chess, he loves chess. So yeah, a fun person to always watch and learn with. And yesterday he was uh, streaming on uh, Twitch live. And I saw his, I was watching his stream and I thought of just challenging him once and see uh, how he, he will respond, accept, accept the challenge or not and how the game will go. So he accepted randomly and uh, it was a three minute blitz. I was playing as black. He was actually teaching uh, the Karo Khan defense at that point of time uh, to the audience that how you should play as Karo Khan or how you should defeat the Karo Khan as well. So I thought uh, I being the Karo Khan lover, uh, always playing the Karo Khan defense uh, on my YouTube channel. So I thought I'll play as black and give him a challenge. So that's what I did. Uh, now, before we start off with this exciting game, I would request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily. So yeah, let's start off with the game. He was playing as white and he started with e4. I, of course, was willing to play Karo Khan defense as always. So I played c6 and he responds with knight to f3. Here I played d5, my standard move uh, next uh, after c6 which is the best move as well, just going for the center, asking questions uh, to the white straight away that if he wants to exchange the pawns or not. And here, uh, Jonathan went with knight to c3. Not to miss, he plays with Zolpi uh, on his Lee Chess account. So just in case you're wondering why Zolpi is mentioned there. And after he develops the knight, uh, I take on the pawn, the main line, and he takes back uh, with the knight. And just as we are streaming, uh, I am recording this, uh, Jonathan has posted uh, Crush the Karo Khan as well on his YouTube channel just right now. I just got the notification. All right, let's continue with the game. Uh, he takes on the pawn and here I develop the bishop on f5, attacking the knight. Knight goes back on g3 and the, here, here the main move is to bring the bishop uh, on g4 and pin the knight. Uh, once bishop comes, of course, the knight is pinned and you can take a turn later on. But I wanted to keep my bishops in the game and not exchange, so I just brought it back on g6, which is not the best move there. Uh, and Jonathan plays the best move, of course, uh, which is h4 and trying to attack and go for the bishop hunt. And I just made a retrieval square for my bishop by pushing h6. Here, uh, he develops his uh, light square bishop, also preparing to castle uh, on c4. I respond with uh, e6. Closing the diagonal of the bishop uh, so that just in case f7 is weakened up, so I don't want to do that. Here he gets the knight into the attack to e5, always very threatening. And there were a couple of tactics here that he can go for, maybe just take on the, uh, the bishop here and spoil my pawn structure. And then uh, e3, e6 is weak. But here, uh, so not to spoil my pawn structure, I played knight to e7 defending my bishop which is a nice move as well. Uh, is it the best move? Nope. Uh, computer saying go back on h7. But uh, the bishop here is doing a couple of things. It's, it is defending uh, the f7 as well. And so the bishop is pretty much important uh, to stay here. So I developed the knight on e7. And he brings the queen now out on e2, going for the kill as soon as possible. It's a three minute blitz. He's trying to, of course, he was winning on time as well. Uh, so here I have to find the right moves and they have to be precise. Otherwise, this position can go wrong very quickly uh, because all his pieces are around my uh, king side already. And I have my king is still in the center. I just try to exchange the knights. The best thing to do whenever you are feeling the pressure, go for exchanges. I place a uh, knight b to d7. Here he goes for the bishop capture and I take back with the knight as was the plan not to spoil the pawn structure. 
Here he placed again a nice move, which is d4, uh, making sure that bishop is developed. Now he can develop the bishop any time. I also developed my bishop to e7, preparing to castle so that just in case uh, the attack comes too early. And he tries to just proceed with his pawn on h5, attacking my knight. Now knight can actually go ahead uh, on h5. Uh, that looks like a good natural square for the knight as well there, and attacking the pawn. Uh, on g2 thereafter but if he castles next move then probably knight is not going to do much over there uh, at least for the time being i just try to bring back the knight on f8 which is not a natural square for the knight but again it's karukan defense and i want to just consolidate it in my position i want to keep my pieces on the board i just want to connect both my knights uh, so they are solid. The structure is pretty nice, just in case you are wondering. It's it, it's a weird looking structure, yes. But my pieces are all protected. My king is in the center, but it's safe. Here he gets the queen now on g4, trying to attack uh, the g7, which is weakened up. And here I just played rook to g8. Now that was a strange move, I would say, because... Uh, my idea was simple, uh, place the rook in front of the queen, don't go for a uh, knight. My, if I now get the knight, I was wondering that uh, probably he will get his knight on uh, e4 and then we will have knight exchange. And I don't want to exchange my pieces, so I just brought a rook to g8. Here he takes on a pawn, he thought it's a free pawn because uh, I, if I take now the bishop, he can take with the queen, uh, he can take my rook with the queen. That's a nice move, if you see. But the, on the hand side, if I play a knight to f6 here, which I did in the game, knight attacks the queen. And queen, if you see, doesn't have much of a retrieval square. Plus, what this knight does is defend the rook as well. So he's about to lose a piece there. He understands, but he tries to hang on to the position by playing queen uh, on to g5. I take the bishop this time, attacking the queen with my rook as well. So he takes another pawn for it, and I went for the center pawn as well. With queen takes on d4. As you can see, I am a piece up, uh, and I, he's just a pawn up. Uh, he's down with the uh, with piece against the pawn, so that's a complete uh, winning position for black here. Uh, queen is all, almost in a very vulnerable space, can, can be trapped any point of time. So things don't look fine. Of course, here the queen is uh, making sure he, that he can't cast on the queen side. Uh, also, uh, if you see, sorry for the trackpad issue, but yeah, if you see, uh, the queen is controlling a lot of stuff. It's attacking the bishop as well as preventing him to castle on the queen side, attacking uh, the b2 as well. So he saves his bishop, which is the right move, by placing bishop on d3. And I went with knight on g4. Now the idea is to attack on the f2, which is a good uh, attacking square a couple of pieces eyeing it and now he had to play a uh, queen uh, to d2 here the obvious move and the only move i would say to defend the situation again uh, the b2 is still hanging i can take it on but again i'm playing a very strong player who is 2300 plus rated i'm 1950 odd so i wanted to make sure that i'm playing very solid and not going for some fun because now uh, 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 one more disadvantage of taking on uh, the B pawn is that he can now castle to safety and post that uh, the rook is going to come on come on uh, the uh, the B, B1 and attack my queen. I have to retrieve and then uh, my B7 is weakened up as well. So a lot of things can go wrong if you allow your opponent to castle there. So instead, I thought of just castling myself on the queen side. Uh, aligning my pieces uh, towards the center. Rook is now centralized. So good place. Yes, my knight isn't developed uh, properly, uh, but still uh, it is fine because I am attacking with a couple of pieces at least and even my rook is active. And the bishop is also a very good piece here. And here Jonathan makes uh, the final blunder, I would say, which is castle on the queen side. Now, because as soon as he castles, he, he misses that his king and queen are in the same diagonal, which I can take advantage of. So I played bishop on g5, attacking the queen. And he resigns because there's no way he can save his queen here. Uh, and that's completely losing position. I heard him saying that this guy is trying to humiliate me now, but that was not the case. I was just trying to play on what 
things I know in, about theory of the Karo Khan and probably some good moves in between, some misses as well, maybe. Uh, I let him come uh, and take on the H6, uh, which was a bad move eventually, but that, that was good uh, for to start off with. If you see here, uh, Jonathan was up by 1.1. But that's the max, uh, I think, no, 1.4 is the max he got into the game. That's because I retrieved my bishop, not pinning the knight, because that was part of the plan to keep my pieces on the board. I hope you liked the video. Do let me know your feedback. Uh, keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel and come back daily because I'm posting one video daily for you. And I hope this improves you your gameplay. Learn the Karo Khan defense. As I always say, it's very interesting and very solid for black. Even Magnus Carlsen finds it tough to break if you play it properly. So do learn it. Uh, and that I'm wishing you all the luck with uh, your future games. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.